chapter 3 again. Thought just struck me as I was praying there. Kathy likes the stuff. Kathy means Bible school. Maybe we should do Bible school in December. I thought of that. You thought of that? For January. For January, yeah. yeah. And so, um, <laughs> we could have a whole different batch of games. That's how I decided how to work in these involving snow. Of course, our lucky it wouldn't snow that week. It would be 50 degrees and muddy is all the time. It happens. And so, uh, you know, while you're drinking that, you agree. I'm going to read verses 11 through 17. John says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and the fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn, and burning up the chaff with the bunch of the fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Now, this is about the baptism of Jesus. John was baptizing people in the Jordan River, fulfilling his calling to prepare the way of the Lord. I don't know if you are prepared for something, but whenever you're the one that's preparing for something, when the event occurs, your job's done. And so John's, John, of his job appears to be drawing to a close. And as I've been working on these sermons on baptism, there's a couple questions that keep coming to mind, you know, about John. What made John go out into the desert and call people to repentance? Is it that nobody ever done anything like this before? You know, and, and he all of a sudden he, he goes out there and he calls to repent. And what made John baptize with water? And what made the people go to him? See, these are good questions. But they, they have deeply spiritual answers because it wasn't, it wasn't, it, this wasn't a church growth strategy. You know, this was, was John was answering a call. John is doing what God asked him to do. And, and I know the biggest question I have asked if I had been John and John, I would have heard God say, go out in the desert to preach. I'd be like, oh, there's nobody out there. Go to a desert to use water to baptize people? Okay, desert and water, do you see a disconnector? You know, there's, there's not water in the desert. Is there, is there so, and there's, there's some things about this that don't make sense other than God told John to do it. That's why it works. When God, and, you, people, and, and people are responding. Because when we do what God asks us to do, He brings the results. Somebody told me a long time ago, do what God's called you to do and trust Him for the results. Every now and then, I lose sight of that, and I try to make results. We try to get results. Because at the end of the day, when it's time to fill all those forms, what do they want to know? The results. And they say, oh, the numbers don't matter, but, you know, they matter. They wouldn't ask for it. Anyhow, there's something deeply spiritual going on here. People are coming to John be baptized in large numbers. And it's not because John's flashy or even articulate. I mean, he's actually a little strange. I mean, his clothes are made of camel's hair. And he eats locusts and wild honey. And he really only has one good sermon. You know? And he preaches it over and over. But that's what God asked him to do. That's what God told him to do. And the people are coming from all over confessing their sins. To be baptized. And then some of the Pharisees and Sadducees we read earlier got wind of this and they went out to see what was going on and, and, and then John gets on their case and, and because somehow they believed that just because they were descended from Abraham, that they were somehow okay and didn't need to do this repentance and salvation thing because Abraham's our daddy, we're good. So John explains what he's doing and what it really means and it's when he says in the passages I read he says, I'm baptizing you with water for repentance, but there's going to come one after me who's more powerful than I am. And I said last week, baptism literally means ceremonial washing. And according to verse 11, it's for repentance. And when you repent of your sins and you're saved, your sins washed away. And baptism is how this is symbolized and publicly proclaimed, but then something strange happens. The one who John mentioned 
who was more powerful than he, whose sandals John wasn't fit to carry, shows up. And he doesn't show up to take over. No, not yet. Jesus shows up because he was baptized. Now this has the potential to get confusing. Jesus never sinned. And, 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 and we proclaim that. We believe that. He lived a sinless life. Yet he comes to be baptized. And we talk about baptism symbolically washing away our sins, so why would the one who never sinned come to be baptized? And we see from John, from John in verse 14, John is, John, all, John's connecting all his dots and saying, well, what are you doing? Coming to me! You know? Like, John's like, I can't help you, Jesus. You're, you're Jesus. What could you possibly need from me? John tries to deter him. You know, I, I need to be baptized by you. You know, if Jesus were to show up, um, I would defer. You know, that, okay, it's all you, Jesus. I got, I uh, anything you can say is better than anything I can say. Because the best thing I can say is, hey, look, there's Jesus. And now, yeah, then we're good. John's message is repent. That's his sermon, repent. Does Jesus need repent? I mean, what's going on? Jesus simply replies, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And the mistake that can be made here is that baptism ends up being a mere formality. But that really couldn't be further from the truth. It's not a formality, it's not a rite of passage. Jesus wants and needs to do everything the right way. In doing so, he sheds more light on what baptism is all about. We see that John consented and baptized Jesus. Then something powerful happened. Nothing changed about Jesus personally. He was, he is, he always will be. The Son of God, the Messiah. But when he came up out of the water, when he came up out of the water, heaven opened, and he saw the Son of God, the Spirit of God, ascending upon him and lighting him like a dove. And a voice from heaven saying, I'm the love of the just I hear the voice of heaven. And be like, Yes, you know? <laughs> Did you everybody hear that? This is my Son, whom I love with him on all pleased. God is announcing. That this guy, Jesus, is his son. He's the one. And God's thrilled about everything Jesus has done. Baptism marked the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Baptism is our proclamation that we are believers in Jesus and ready for ministry. Now, that isn't to say you need to be baptized in order to minister. It isn't clear that John the Baptist was even ever baptized. I don't know if you baptize yourself or not. Yeah. <laughs> But, it's, uh, but there's something deeply spiritual about baptism, about passing through the water, about going into the water. Jesus comes to John to be baptized because it was important for him to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. He taught us about the need to be born again. When someone is born, the process starts with water, right? Mom's water breaks, and that's the signal, right? Okay, looks like you've done this before. When the water breaks, you go, right? That's how it works. Okay, and the baby's born, and everybody's happy. When one is born again, then you can't go back into mom. Not, they can just stop confused there, didn't they? But you can't return to the water. And come out of the water and be prepared for life of ministry. Jesus was going to undergo a whole lot more than just this. He had a whole lot of stuff to go through. And it was important for him to fulfill all righteousness. Later in his ministry, when Jesus is approached by James and John, remember James and John, they come to Jesus and like, hey, when you get to heaven, we want to be sitting next to you. We want to be your two best buddies in heaven. Kind of a bold question to ask. You know, um, I don't really care where my seat is in heaven. I have on the plane, you know. And so, okay, I'm good. And so, uh, and Jesus says, hey, can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? Or be baptized with the baptism I'm going to be baptized with. Can you do it? They're like, oh yeah, 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 we can, we can. And Jesus says, okay, you will be. You will be, but as far as who gets to sit next to me, you know, sometimes I remember being a kid in school, there was, there was always one or two kids and everybody wanted to sit with. You know, I, I thank God I was never that kid because I, I don't really like people all that, all over me, really. I kind of have this uh, arm's length distance, we're good. Right here, but they want to be all they want to be next to Jesus, and that's not his call to make. Jesus was going to go and be crucified, 
And these, these, these guys, James and John, did eventually die for their faith, too. And that's really what baptism is. We're baptized into Christ's death. That's why Jesus had to be baptized. Not because he sinned, but because he would take the sin of the world upon himself and take the cross, and the wages of sin is death. Baptism was Jesus' way, and it's our way of saying we are dying to ourselves and living to please our Father in heaven. Water symbolically washes our sins away, but water has another meaning. I mean, last week I talked about how water, how necessary water was for life. And you can only go a certain amount of time without water. You go a long time without food. You can only go a short window without water. It's important. But, it had, but in Jewish culture, water, more specifically, the depths under the water, represented the realm of evil. Now, water isn't evil. They didn't think water was evil. But the depths, the depths they viewed as their only. When Jesus came to them walking on the water, they were like, whoa. And it wasn't because Jesus was using floaties. Or some other, it wasn't some kind of crazy trick. It was because he was demonstrating his authority by putting even the water under his feet. He changed the way we look at water. He changed the way they looked at water. You know, um, Noah was rescued from the water, wasn't he? Moses and the Israelites were rescued from the water. That water was destructive water, wasn't it? That water in Noah's day killed everybody else. The water in Moses' day killed all the Egyptians. They were rescued from the water. It can be devastating. The people of West Virginia know how devastating the water can be recently. Going under the water represents death. So when Jesus comes to John, he's entering the water. He's embracing the fact he's going to die. Right? And that's, not, that's not the good news, is it? The fact that we're all going to die someday isn't the good news. The highlight isn't what happens when Jesus goes in, though, is it? The highlight happens when he comes out of it. Jesus washed away the sin he was going to take on. If we're baptized in him, we are in him. He washes away our sin, and we leave it in the water where it belongs. In the depths, far away. When Jesus comes out of the water, God reveals to the people who he is and his ministry begins. When we come out of the water, we need to be ready to reveal who Jesus is and come out ready for ministry. You know, there's too many people, you look around the world, and most of what's wrong with the world, if you think about it, you boil it down as people trying to be famous. They want to be famous. They want to make history. Be the first one to do this, or the first one to do that. Or I was the guy who did this. When we are in Christ, we are saying, I don't matter. Jesus does. In a hundred years from now, is anybody going to care who I am? But in a hundred years from now, right here in this place, they better still be proclaiming Jesus. Who cares if they know who we are? Right? We'll be in the filing cabinet back there somewhere with our names on, on something. That's all that matters. Baptism is about you publicly saying, Lord, I am dead. I don't matter. I'm putting myself in the water. When I come out of the water, reveal yourself to others through me. When John asked Jesus about it, Jesus said, let it be so now. It's proper to fulfill all righteousness. If, you, if, you, if you've been baptized, then uh, um, I'm not sure if you remember the moment you were. But if you haven't been, pray about it. Pray about it. And ask God, and, and let it be so. It was important for Jesus to fulfill all righteousness. It is important for us to fulfill all righteousness as well. Let's pray. Father God, help us. Help us, Lord, to, to understand, Lord, what it means to, to, go, to go to the water, Lord, for what John was doing. For what John did to Jesus that day, Lord. And when Jesus tells us to go out into all the world and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, uh, move in our hearts, Lord, that if uh, Lord, if there's even one, Lord, that needs to be, that needs to be baptized, Lord, that needs to to uh, be rescued from the water, Lord, move in our hearts, Lord, and, and Lord, uh, not just so we have a nice service, but Lord, so we can publicly proclaim to the world that we are ready for ministry, we are ready to be who all of you call us to be. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit as we as we worship, as we go about our week, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.